Hello everyone. Welcome to the course on Practical Machine Learning with Python. This course was created by the Stanford Crowd Course Initiative. In this module, we approach one of the essential components in machine learning and data science, the features. The topics that will occupy us in this module are what the features are, how they are manufactured, and how to choose which one to use. Why do data scientists spend so much time on data wrangling and data preparation? The reasons are simple. The scientists want to access the best variables with which to build their models. These variables are known as features in machine learning jargon. For many data applications, Feature engineering and feature selection are just as important, if not more important, than choice of algorithm. To quote Peter Norvig, good features allow a simple model to beat a complex model. The features he was referring to can be in images, the colors, textures, contours, in signals, the frequency, phase, samples, spectrum, in time series, ticks, trends, self-similarities, in biomed, the DNA sequences and genes, in text, words, grammatical dependencies. Well-conceived new features can sometimes capture the important information in a data set much more effectively than the original features. There are three general methodologies. Feature extraction typically results in significant reduction in dimensionality and are domain-specific. Mapping existing features to a new space, or constructing features by combining existing features. Take, for example, the extraction of power bands from an EEG. When our goal is to get the best possible results from a predictive model, we need to get the most from what we have, this includes getting the best results from the algorithms we are using. It also involves getting the most out of the data for our algorithms to work with. The features in our data will directly influence the predictive models we can use and the results we can achieve. We could say that the better the features are prepared and chosen, the better the results you will achieve. This is true, but it is also misleading. The results we achieve are a factor of the model you choose, the data we have available, and the features we prepared. Even our framing of the problem and objective measures we're using to estimate accuracy play a part. Our results are dependent on many interdependent properties. We need great features that describe the structures inherent in our data. Take, for example, the extraction of power bands from an EEG. The steps in this example of feature creation are 1. Select time window 2. Perform a Fourier transform on each EEG channel to produce the corresponding channel's power spectrum 3. Segment the power spectrum into bands and 4. Create the channel band feature by summing values in a band. The use of a Fourier transform eliminates noise present in a time domain and allows mapping the existing feature to a new space to be more useful. In this example, the new space is frequency. Simple functions as x to the k, log x, e to the x are often used to make the data more like some standard distribution to better satisfy assumptions of a particular algorithm. For example, discriminant analysis explicitly models each class distribution as a multivariate Gaussian. How can the dimensionality be reduced? By eliminating redundancy, highly correlated features contain duplicate information, an example is purchase price and sales tax paid. By removing irrelevant features, the feature contains no information useful for discriminating outcome. An example would be student ID number does not predict a student's GPA. 
Discarding noisy features where the signal-to-noise ratio is too low to be useful for discriminating outcome. An example, high random measurement error on an instrument. Actually, the dimensionality is the enemy that lurks hidden behind the data and within the data, both from an economic view, in terms of runtime or storage space required, and from a purely statistical view. There are three general classes of feature selection algorithms, filter methods, wrapper methods, and embedded methods. Filter methods apply a statistical measure to assign a scoring to each feature. The features are ranked by the score and either selected to be kept or removed from the data set. The methods are often univariate and consider the feature independently or with regard to the dependent variable. Example of some filter methods include the chi-squared test, information gain, and correlation coefficient scores. Wrapper methods consider the selection of a set of features as a search problem, where different combinations are prepared, evaluated, and compared to other combinations. A predictive model could be used to evaluate a combination of features and assign a score based on model accuracy. The search process may be methodical, such as a best first search, it may be stochastic, such as a random hill climbing algorithm, or it may use heuristics, like forward and backward passes, to add and remove features. An example of a wrapper method is the recursive feature elimination algorithm. The third class of feature selection algorithms are embedded methods. Embedded methods learn which features best contribute to the accuracy of the model while the model is being created. The most common type of embedded feature selection methods are regularization methods. Regularization methods are also called penalization methods that introduce additional constraints into the optimization of a predictive algorithm, such as a regression algorithm that bias the model towards lower complexity fewer coefficients. Example of regularization algorithms are the lasso, elastic net, and ridge regression. Filtering is the most common search strategy. The basic idea of assigning a heuristic score to each feature to filter out the obviously useless ones raises several questions. Does the individual feature seem to help prediction? Do we have enough data to use it reliably? These approaches are very fast and simple to apply. But they have their disadvantages. Other filtering strategies look at interactions among features. Features are eliminated, eliminated based on the correlation between pairs of features. Features are eliminated based on statistical significance of individual coefficients from a linear model fit to the data. For example, t-statistics of individual coefficients from linear regression. Both filter and wrapper approaches require a, may, a way to measure the predictive quality of the subset and also be a cost-efficient strategy for searching the possible subsets. An exhaustive search is usually infe an infeasible search. The balance between the advantages and disadvantages of filtering approaches leads to a conclusion that light filtering is an efficient initial step if the running time of our learning algorithm could be an issue. When it comes to wrapper approaches for feature selection, most common search strategies are greedy. Random selection, forward selection, and backward eliminations. Scoring uses some chosen machine learning algorithm where each feature subset is scored by training the model using only that subset, then assessing the model and assessing the accuracy in the usual way. In wrapper methods, learning algorithms are used as a black box, computing the objective function. Then the search is done. An exhaustive search is expensive. For n features, we have 2 to the n possible subsets of S. Backward elimination tends to find better models, better at finding models with interacting features. 
but it is frequently too expensive to fit the larger models at the beginning of a search. Although greedy searches are common and effective, both can be too greedy. Take a look at the pseudocode for random selection. First, choose the trial subset of features from the full set of available features. Run the wrapper algorithm using the trial subset of features. If the score is better than the last than the best score to date, then update the list of selected features and the best score. Repeat these steps with another subset of features. In practice, feature selection and feature engineering are iterative processes where humans leverage automation to wade through candidate features. Statistical software has long had stepwise procedures for feature selection. Startups are providing similar tools. SkyTree's new user interface lets business users automate feature selection. There's more interest in automation from researchers and startups. A group out of Stanford just released a paper on a new R language extension and execution framework designed for feature selection. Their R extension enables data analysts to incorporate feature selection using high-level constructs that form a domain-specific language. Some startups like Context Relevant and Spark Beyond are working to provide users with tools that simplify feature engineering and selection. In some instances, this includes incorporating features derived from external data sources. Users of the Spark Beyond are able to incorporate the company's knowledge databases, as well as other sources like Wikipedia, OpenStreetMap, GitHub, etc., to enrich their own data sources. While many startups who build analytic tools begin by focusing on algorithms, Many products will soon begin highlighting how they handle feature selection and discovery. There are many reasons why there will be more emphasis on features. Interoperability, this includes, includes finding actionable features that drive model performance. Big data, companies have more data sources to draw upon. And an appreciation of data pipeline. Algorithms are just one component. Building tools that automate feature discovery is an important topic in artificial engineering research. And that concludes our video. This course was created as a part of the Stanford Crowd Course Initiative, the world's first massive online open coursework developed entirely by an online community. If you'd like to learn more about us or view more courses, visit crowdcourse.stanford.edu.